Hello and welcome all. Uh, today I have chosen to talk to you directly before switching over to my next video and this time again one on middleware. Now with the middleware let me tell you uh, the middleware is out the most important topic in entire ASP.NET Core um, framework and ASP.NET Core uh, you can say um, ecosystem because you know this is the middleware that you know that comprises that actually aims to uh, give functionality one at a time one small component at a time like you have seen through the last two uh, videos on middleware that you know uh, things such as use static files to fetch the static files or use developer exception and use um, routing use authorization authentication so all of these pieces together form the big application so without the middleware at ASP.NET Core it cannot exist. It cannot exist. So please bear with me that sometimes it might look a bit dull or a bit dry subject. But um, I just intend to bring two more videos after this on um, middleware. And I'm sure that will be of value to you for your time. But after that, I'll be switching over to the more, I mean, the topics which people, uh, which developers are more curious to know about, you know, like middle, um, the MVC, ASP.NET Core MVC, controllers and uh, um, Web API, etc. But for the time, please get the concept of middleware right and view the videos to the maximum extent possible to get the maximum value out of your precious time. So let's switch over to our actual lecture. Hello and welcome all. So in this lecture, we'll be taking the request delegate in code as an inline middleware and this is part 8 of the series. So I strongly request you to, if you haven't gone through the other parts, do so because this part is basically built on the last few lectures. Alright, so now let's switch over to what the learning outcome for today is. Now, in this lecture, we shall learn, do a bit of hands-on coding to write the basic inline middleware using a simple request delegate and inspect the response after shifting the request delegates in the request pipeline. Okay. And so request delegates are used to build the request pipeline or the middleware pipeline. Now we will be using run map and use extension methods and they are used to configure request delegates. We'll soon see the use of run and um, run and use. And as individual request delegates can be specified or an individual request delegate can be specified as an anonymous method which is called inline middleware or it can be defined as reusable class. Both are custom middleware types. Now for detailed discussion of custom middleware type, I mean with the reusable class, I will keep it for a later lecture because that is an advanced topic. But for now, in this lecture, we shall inspect the inline middleware written with anonymous method. Now this requires some knowledge of anonymous methods, but I will try to clarify as much with the simple anonymous uh, inline method that I am going to write. Now these reusable classes and inline anonymous methods are middleware, also called middleware components. Each middleware component in the request pipeline is responsible for invoking the next component in the pipeline or short circuiting the pipeline. When a middleware short circuits, it's called a terminal middleware because it provides, it prevents further middleware from processing the request. Now the simplest possible ASP.NET Core app sets a single request delegate that handles all the requests. This case doesn't include an actual request pipeline. Instead, a single anonymous function is called in response to every HTTP request. Now let's switch over to Visual Studio. The last time we have seen the configure method, we had a few um, middleware like developer exception page or exception handler and 
um, HTTP as redirection, use static files, and we have discussed in detail about some of these middleware, at least. So what I am going to do is I am going to write a, a request delegate as an inline middleware. Now let's start writing just above the use developer exception page middleware. And I will be shifting the request delegate and show you how the response is varied in different cases of shifting. Okay, so let's get going. So app, this app object, which is of type I application builder. So app dot, you can see there is a run extension method. Now, what does it re return? This is an extension which returns an I application builder. So it adds a terminal middleware delegate to the application's request pipeline. So app dot run. Now this will take a request delegate. We'll soon come to that. So this request delegate in this uh, instance, it will be an async uh, context object, which is an HTTP context. And this is a bit of a Lambda expression. So um, I would advise you to go through a bit of some courses on uh, in YouTube or anywhere else in MSD and Microsoft about Lambda expressions and a asynchronous um, programming before coming to this tutorial. All right, so having said so, semicolon and within this pair of curly braces, we'll write await. So this async keyword has to be followed by await keyword in asynchronous programming. So await, we'll use this context object, which I will show you. This is an HTTP context and uh, async and then await context. So we'll use that object context dot response. It's not request, but response dot write async and whatever you'd like to write here let's write um, hello from uh, inline middleware okay And so here, semicolon, sorry, there is a semicolon over here, okay, right, that's fine, so all the squiggly lines are gone, so it's happy, so let's indent it a bit to make it clearer. So basically, uh, when this run extension method is called, a context object is passed, and you know this context await. This is an asynchronous method, so uh, it has to await on this response. So it writes asynchronously. So whatever within this write async method, it actually writes to the stream on the browser. Okay. But this um, run method does not write uh, the response immediately because it is an asynchronously fetched. So the thread is not blocked when the application uh, is the, the, uh, executing. So till this uh, response is received, it keeps on executing the other part of the uh, middleware pipeline all right and then it gets this response now let's see what is the effect of this so control f5 to run this application so we get this uh, response from the uh, request delegate hello from the inline middleware now if you're looking for an explanation can you just think for a few seconds why we got this uh, response what happened to the all the other middleware in the pipeline uh, below this. Now, 
as I have told that this run, first run extension method, it actually um, acts as a terminal middleware and terminal means it short, short circuits the rest of the middleware and it returns a response. And since this code is context.response.writeAsync, so it is writing asynchronously to the stream and none other of these middleware even up to use endpoints is getting um, executed even though uh, you are coming up with a developer exception page and i have got a developer exception thrown okay here change the smoke alarm battery but this is basically not reached at all so the request meets uh, this uh, first request delegate okay and it changes its track and it gets returned from this run method run extension method okay of an i application build builder type and then you get it on the response stream now let's see what happens if we swap the position and put it after the uh, environment dot is development block okay after the exception page middleware now control f5 again wow now you still get the hello from the inline middleware you still get the response back from the this uh, request delegate so can you explain um, so let's come to the explanation now the thing is although it meets the developer exception page it calls the developer exception page but basically for this developer exception page to appear as a response that we have seen in the uh, few lectures before when we had we didn't have this uh, request delegate and we were having the rest of the code so for this to really work you need to travel all the way to app.use endpoints and this endpoint middleware it uses the map register pages middleware to map this register page and it gets the uh, handler method which is um, this one uh, which actually throws the new exception but that's not the case now because this is a terminal middleware it reverses the flow and it gets a response in um, to the request and it writes to the stream again now finally if you change the position once more once again to put it at the end of the pipeline let's see what happens so what would you expect should it again write hello from the inline middleware or should it um, throw the exception page because the request is not for any static file or not a any particular routing or authorization but it, it is meeting this um, user use developer exception page middleware and since this is the development environment i have not changed the development environment to any other environment so do you expect now to throw the developer exception page let's see wow an unhandled exception occurred while processing the request change the smoke alarm battery so throw new exception now this code has actually uh, the exception page and line number is also written index.cshtml.cs now if you ask me for an explanation if you haven't uh, been able to figure it out so what happens is that this run extension method or which is a terminal middleware which has acted as a terminal middleware in the first two cases is not reached at all so once the request travels and it meets the uh, use endpoints middleware it reverses its flow and it never reaches this middleware so when it reverses its flow it goes back through other um, of these middleware and the 
exception page is thrown okay basically even um, if you look into this uh, um, you know flow of this uh, code you can see that as soon as it meets the uh, use endpoints middleware it actually goes to the page handler method and on get method uh, okay because the request was for the index page because i have not requested any other page it is if it is um, the index page so it it started up for looking for the request for the index razor page and so this is the index handler method that is the on get method and it threw the exception as it could not reach this uh, method which would write to the stream okay so in this lecture i think we can basically finish over here but before finishing i must tell you that we can chain multiple request delegates together with use extension method there is another use extension method so run use and map are basically the three extension methods to write these delegates okay so here let's see this uh, use in action so um, let's get over here and introduce app dot use okay and then again in a sync call and this time it takes two parameters context and the next context object and the next okay and then lambda expression lambda operator within curly braces um, semicolon over here all you need to write is await now you can use this next object next dot invoke okay so what it does is that it invokes the next that is it actually goes to the app dot run middleware this uh, extension method okay it calls this extension method semicolon over here now basically if you run this application nothing else will happen this is just for chaining the request delegates that i have shown you this but let's run this and the output will exactly be the same you will come up with a developer exception page again yeah okay so developer exception page is there the same way as it was without this use so if you just swap over the position again and put it just before or at the top it will come back with the response writing response asynchronously so here you can see that you know it is exactly doing the same way behaving the same way as if uh, this uh, use extension method was not uh, there i mean all this in conjunction with this app dot run block of code is doing it's chaining the delegates request delegates and if you put this on top again it will exactly behave the way it was earlier without this block okay so if you lastly just satisfy yourself with another control f5 yeah so here you come up with this response back from the delegate so in this lecture we have seen what is a request delegate and we have written it to simple request inline delegates or inline middleware with a sync and await keyword and lambda expression and i have proved a point that you know shifting uh, the position of uh, this request delegate bring different results depending upon the flow of request response through the 
middleware pipeline. So 